This is me, and my body fat is 32%. And in today's video, I'm gonna be asking, why is it so high? During today's video, we're gonna be going to Red On Performance Center in Liverpool to test my power output, my lactate threshold, my jump, my grip strength, and of course, my body fat percentage. So if you wanna see me die on the treadmill, why white men can jump, and why my body fat percentage is at 32%, then watch the rest of the video. So the reason why I'm running some of the tests in today's video is because I'm moving into a new training block and I wanted to kind of see where my base level is, my fundamentals of my strength, my power, my speed, my endurance. And all this is because I'm basically going to be competing in a High Rocks event in January. And I'm supposed to do an ultra marathon as well, which Lucy unfortunately signs up for. What this is going to do, it's going to help me map out my next phase of the training cycle. And it's also hopefully, such wood, because I'm like the glass man, try and prevent injury with inside my training program as much as possible. We've got lactate threshold test. It's submaximal ramp, okay? So what I mean by that is it starts off dead chilled out. So just run at 6K an hour, all right? It's a bit of a shuffle, to be honest. Um, and then every three minutes, we'll ramp up a little bit, okay? Usually anywhere between 15 and 21 minutes is where the test ends. Okay, so every three minutes we'll ramp up a little bit by 2k an hour. Lucy went first on the lactate test and obviously absolutely crushed it. Then I went next on it. So the setup is you put the boob tube on, the heart rate strap, which I sometimes wear for running anyway. And essentially we start pumping up the speed. Now the reason for the lactate threshold test is to physiological assessment to utilize and gorge an individual's aerobic and anaerobic performance. It identifies the point at which lactate starts to accumulate in the blood at a faster rate than it would be removed during incremental exercise. So this is why we jump on the treadmill. The speed incrementally jumps up on the treadmill. It gets harder and harder and harder as the lactate starts to pump into the blood. We then take these little finger pricks as you go through, or Ash did it anyway, and I must be like cold-blooded or just have piss poor circulation in my hands because the amount of times I have to prick my fingers felt like a fucking heroin addict. Now knowing the lactate threshold can be crucial for athletes, especially in fitness enthusiasts, to tailor the programs around your performance. So for me, there's a lot of things I can take away from the results from this. And I'm gonna pop up my results here because one of the things that we took away from the lactate threshold test, and I was actually quite surprised about because I probably ran five or six times in the past two months just because of injuries and stuff, but I was still in the top 15 percentile for all athletes, not just the human population, but all athletes. And this is going to help me move forward at helping look at what my perceived half marathon, marathon, 10K, 5K would be, my easy run times, the heart rate that I need to stick to in a lot more detail. Next up with the back squat test. So this was to measure incremental loads and my power through the back squat, performed a series of different loads at a 1RM. And this also, as you'll probably see in the video, there was uh, an accorder which was attached to the barbell to record the velocity and the displacement of data which will then synchronize with the load to calculate the force. Now, one of the things that I was thinking of probably wasn't in optimal performance after just being absolutely tanked off the back of a treadmill to then go into a 1RM, but I actually performed quite well in this with all things considered. I think we worked up to 190 kilos altogether. Drive, 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 drive. Easy, Good. 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 My PB before this is or was about 220 kilos, but this is when I was following the 531 strength method. Again, you can get this on the My Coach app. I have included it in there. It's probably the strongest I've ever been. And again, the results for this are pop up, but it measures different points in which the squat, in which you slow down, speed up your weaker areas, your velocity, your depth, when you get stuck in the hole. And from this, you they're able to work out and predict what your 1RM would be potentially on a good day. Now mine was around 207 kilos based on my current strength level. What this also shows is like the different points in the squat I can get better. So if you're someone who gets stuck in the hole of the squat, then you can do things like working from that area. You can do like one and a half reps. You can do pause reps. You can do bench squats, depending on where you fall short in your squat. Now for me, I don't do a lot of squatting just because again, I'm built like the glass man at the moment. I want to try and avoid exercise that cause too much injury. I probably will keep some squats in the, my program moving forward. But for me, the, the position I can get in a hack squat is just much more beneficial, especially because I just want some big fat saucy quads. Now next up was a jump test. The last time I did this was with my, with my friend Harry Aikens, who's a 100 meter GB runner. And as you can see here, the man's like a fucking gazelle. Unfortunately, you will be lucky if you get a, a piece of tracing paper under my feet when I'm jumping. But the results again were quite good. Again, MBA, sign me off. The results showed basically that if you can generate 1000 watts, I think it is a power, and this greatly reduces the risk of injury. And for me, this is a big thing because as a heavier guy and as a heavier runner, the big things that I want to try and do is re 
it just reduced my risk of injury as much as possible. Next, we did the grip test. I know what you're thinking, Ben. Sure, your grip strength is like Iron Man at this point due to the years and years and years you put into the teenage period on Pornhub, but you would be wrong. However, you may also think, Ben, you've just completed the world record for the 24 hours longest farmers carry. Your grip strength must be pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. It put me in the top 90th percentile, but this is again, I haven't worked on grip strength a lot. However, the hand grip strength acts as a biomarker for general health. Apparently it's one of the best and biggest health markers that you can take for understanding your overall health, which sounds strange. But as I was speaking to Ash on one of the videos, he was explaining how a lot of athletes when dieting down will really reduce grip strength. It used to be called the female athlete triad, um, because essentially it presented these females quite clearly as a, a messed up cycle. So they wouldn't have a regular cycle each month. And they didn't really think it presented in males. Um, as time went on and as the literature developed, we then understood that it does present in males, it just looked different. Yeah. Um, so if we, obviously if we don't get this right and we are low, so in that 25th and 10th percentile, then there, there needs to be an intervention put in place to help support your health, yeah. and to help support your relationship with food, uh, and so just to conduct further investigation really as to what, what the issues are, if there are any. The biggie body fat percentage. So the test was an ultrasound test and I had to have the data up in front of me. But first, I uploaded this video to Instagram, which I think a lot of people got quite arsy about because it was mine and Lucy's body fat percentages. And this is where we need to be really careful when looking at people's body fat percentages, but also commenting on other people's bodies. Like, at the end of the day, one, who gives a shit what your body fat percentage is? It can change and fluctuate day to day. But also, the initial test that we got back, these were based on, and there's a comment on the Instagram page that you can see from Ash, who did the tests. These were all done the ultrasound uh, before adjusting with margin of error, age, height, weight, sex, etc. These were just all raw scores, and this is what you get back without punching any of that data in. The only true way to be able to know what your body fat percentage is would just be to skin you alive. And it's probably not that comfortable and probably isn't optimal for life. But again, if you're down for it, I can probably put you in touch with a guy. After the data was inputted from age, weight, sex, height, etc., my body fat percentage actually came out at 14.8%. So it came dramatically down. And this is kind of where I'd expect it to be. There's lots of different ways and ranges you can take body fat, and this is one of the more accurate ones. If you're using those handles in Pure Gym, these can often change depending on the water levels that are in your body at the time, so aren't always the most accurate. However, one of the things to remember that even if you're taking caliper readings or using these things or using ultrasound is even if the reading is inaccurate or the person taking the body fat percentage isn't accurate, it's better for it to be consistently inaccurate because then at least you know the differences and the changes over time from the program that you're following. Mine came through in the healthy range. Uh, a male's body fat should be between anywhere from 5 to 25%, and mine falls in the range of athletic. I probably would like to lower mine a little bit. I'd like to lose a little bit of weight, which would probably include muscle as well, just so that I can be a more efficient runner and become more efficient for when I'm training for high rocks as well. BMI, body mass index. And this is one that often people get butt hit about generally because they come back as obese. Mine comes back as overweight. When I had mine done for the police, came back as overweight. The thing we need to do with BMI is, and the way that it is accurate, is we use BMI plus common sense. Something that not a lot of people often have, but if we apply it, we often get to a range of where we know we should be and we know where we're truly at. BMI is quite an accurate indicator for the general population, because most of them aren't walking around like Arnold Schwarzenegger or the front row of the England prop. The reason why these body fat percentages are always interesting is because a lot of people think, oh, he's, 5% body fat or she's 7% body fat. And the thing is, if you ever see anyone at 5% body fat, I would be really surprised. Even people from the Olympia last weekend, not many of them are walking around at 5% body fat, if any. And we see these diagrams often put on Instagram of what 20% looks like, 15% looks like, 10% looks like. And it's literally like, piss in the wind. None of them are truly accurate unless you're getting the body fat readings done. And the big question you need to ask yourself, do you really need to know it? Now, what this means for my training is that it gives me a lot of data to play off and I can play around with metrics, look at top end data, look at my PBs and look at how I can then go back next time and look how this next training block has improved that. So if you're someone who is wanting to know where your start point is, know what's going on underneath the hood, but also look at what your potential may be from a training block. I would definitely recommend going down and seeing the guys at Red On Performance. I'll leave a lot of their details in the description link below so you can get in contact with them or look at the test that you may potentially want to do. The other thing I say is don't worry about body fat, but the good thing is you can actually compare yourself to yourself from coming back from these data points 
and not yourself to other people. If you've got any questions or any comments, please feel free to drop them below. Unless they're arsey or negative comments, then you can get to f Cut the boxes. Da, 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 da. Subscribe. Da, 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 da.